hi everyone you're welcome to my youtube channel i am precious all right so here we have complementary property of uh, or properties of uh, trigonometric ratios so you recall in the last video we talked about trick uh, ratios the sine the cosine and the tangent okay so now these uh, ratio these particular trig ratios have a uh, complementary properties and it exists only among the sine and the cosine and what is this property okay so there are two of them which are just one and the same so the first says that if i have sine of uh, theta that it is equal to the cos of 90 minus theta all right and then the second states that uh, if it is cos that comes first that the cos of theta is also equal to the sine of 90 minus theta so the implication of this is that for instance if i have the cos of uh, uh, say 30 that it should be the same thing as the sine of 90 minus 30 which is 60 and this is true you can check that of course the cos of 30 in decimal is 0 0.8660 approximately and that's also the value of sine 30 okay so um meanwhile before we continue what is actually uh, the meaning of com when are two angles said to be complementary if i have an angle say x and y as two angles two of them are complementary implies that the sum of the two is equal to 90 degrees that means x plus y is equal to 90 and of course you can actually see that the angle you have here is all actually complementary to this angle and so that imposes that complementary property on trig functions or trig ratios because you can see that theta plus uh, 90 minus theta is actually equal to 90 degrees so the two angles are complementary angles okay so now how did we get this complementary property of a uh, sine and trig uh, ratios now if we draw our right angle triangle you recall that that is where these trig ratios began from okay so we have a right angle triangle and uh, let's say that this is angle theta this is already 90 degrees that's here all right so and you recall that uh, for a triangle the sum of the angles is 180 so if here is 90 already that means the remaining two angles must be 90 and so if we have called this one theta then the remaining one should be 90 minus theta so whatever the theta is if you remove it from 90 you will get this one so the implication is that if here is 30 here must be 60 if here is uh, 45 here must be 45 and so on so you can see that because of this angle 90 degree here uh, degrees that we have here it imposes the complementary property on these other two angles and so if i now decide to look for the cos of theta you see that let's say that here is b and here is ac so you see that my cos theta is equal to adjacent which is a the adjacent of this theta is a all over the hypotenuse which is b and then if i decide to now look for the sine of 90 minus theta see what is going to happen you will see that my this is my angle 90 minus theta which is this one here okay and the, uh, remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse and the opposite of this angle is a while the hypotenuse remains the same which is b and of course you can see assuming this is equation one and this is equation two you can see that equation one and two are actually equal a over b and a over b so that simply implies that the cos of my theta is actually the same as the sine of my 90 minus theta so that's how this particular relationship was uh, derived and we are stating this because it's going to be important for us going forward in other things we are going to be looking at such as uh, the trig ratios of uh, spatial angles 
for instance, if I ask you to find the sine of 30, uh, you know, if you have the value of sine of 30, which is half, we'll see this under special angles. You will see that it is then easy to find the value of cos 60 because cos 60 is the complementary trig ratio of sine 30. And so this is also supposed to be what? Half, because by this property, the two of them are what? Equal. Okay, so let's quickly do some examples now. All right, so for example one now, we can see the beautiful areas where we can make use of that complementary property of a sine and cosine. This example says if sine theta is equal to cos 60, so we are given that sine theta and we are asked to find the value of theta that will behave this way. Of course, I've actually given an example like that here already. So, but how do you solve this kind of example? You know, what do you do? First of all, you state that what your interest will be is how to ensure that both sides have the same trig ratio. Here is sine, here is cos. Can I change any of them to be what is on the other side? So I have sine here. I can actually change this sine to be in cos or change the cos to be in sine. So uh, I can state that I know that my sine theta is equal to cos 90 minus theta. Where did I get this? From the complementary property. So if sine theta is equal to this, then I can replace this with cos 90 minus theta. And when I do that, I am going to have... So when you have done this, all you just need to do now is to cancel. The cosine will cancel each other. And so I just have tan, uh, sorry, 90 minus theta is equal to 60 degrees. And so I will now solve for my theta to now get the value. And if you take theta to this side, take 60 to this side, you will have that 90 minus 60 is equal to theta will become positive. Therefore, my theta is actually equal to what? 30 degrees, which is what we got in the earlier example that I did. So how do you do that for this one? Now, remember I said you can also change this to sign. You can try that and you'll get exactly the same answer. So we recall that cos alpha by the complementary angle is equal to the sine of 90 minus alpha. So once you state this formula, just use this to replace what you have here so that the both sides will have the same trig ratio. And so that means my cos alpha will now become sine 90 minus alpha, and that is equal to the sine of 40, okay? So, of course, the signs will cancel themselves, and so 90 minus alpha will be equal to 40. And so immediately, if you uh, collect like terms, your alpha alone will be equal to what? 50. So if I choose to use the other approach, in this case, I want to change my sine to cos. So once I state that, that means sine 40 will be equal to cos of 90 minus 40, because 40 is your theta here. And so that means sine 40 will be equal to the sine of 50. And so I will use it to re replace, sorry, will be equal to the cos of 50, not sine 50. Okay, so I'll use it to replace this one. So I will now have that cos alpha is equal to cos 50. So when that happens, my cos will take away cos alpha will still be equal to the 50 I got here. So let's look at the next example. Right here, we are told that sine beta is equal to the cos of beta plus 20. And we are to find the value of beta. So just the same approach. Try to, first of all, change any of these to the, the ratio on the other side. So I want to change my sine beta. So by relationship, sine beta will be in cos, cos of 90 minus beta. Okay, so I will use it to replace what I have. So what it means is that uh, my sine beta will now become the cos of 90 minus beta, and that is equal to on the right hand side i have beta plus 20 right and so trying to solve this now the cosines will take away each other so i have 90 minus beta to be equal to beta plus 20 
So if I collect like terms, 90, the 20 coming here will become minus 20. That will be beta plus beta, which will be 2 beta. So I have 70 is equal to 2 beta here. And so if I divide both sides by 2, my beta alone is equal to the 35 degrees. And so here I have the example 4, which I'm going to leave for you as an exercise. Right, this is where we end it for this video. Kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel and do share and like our YouTube videos. We'll see you in our next video. Bye.